How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I just walked through the Olympic, uh, the Olympic Village, which is right by my house. Oh, that's, okay, that's right. You're you're in Paris, where all that stuff's happening right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy. It's yeah, pretty crazy. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're not here to talk about the Olympics. We're yeah. here to talk about the remix that you did for our new album, yeah. the remix you did of Slippery Friction. Yeah. First of all, I want to go over the roller coaster ride of even <laughs> even this coming to be. So when we first did the call out, I contacted you and you're like, yes, and you picked one and you were like, I want, I, I think I should do this. And you were like telling me, I have all these ideas, like I'm going to make it a, a, a noise a, a noise album or, or a noise song or you had like these different, no, wait a minute, I'm going to do this. And, and you had all these ideas that you were going to do. And then I didn't hear nothing for a while. And then I checked with you and you're like, oh, we have a new EP coming out. We're going on tour. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. So then I razzed you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and gave you, a, you said you were going to do all this cool stuff, man. And then I was like, no, no, that's cool. But then you finally said, you know what? I'm going to work on it tomorrow and I'll get it to you tomorrow. So that's how that started. So walk me through how when you finally said, you know what, hell with it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sit down, go through it. What did you do? What was, the, uh, what was the inspiration, first of all, for when you sat down and did it? So first, first of all, uh, when I listened to your record, uh, all the songs kind of like spoke to me. But that one, that one especially spoke to me, spoke to me. And okay. there's, there's something about the vocal that, uh, that just screamed at me and it screamed, distortion, distortion, <laughs> damn it, damn it. Uh, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's, what, that's what I heard you saying. I heard you sp saying distortion. I, so slippery, fr slippery friction just kind of like jumped out of the record. I've been doing uh, music for many, many years, as you know. And mm -hmm. as, as time goes by, I realized that the only thing uh, that really makes a project, um, the only thing that's important in a project is artistic intent. Uh, and with your remix, I, I, I had it. I had it. I knew what I had to do. <laughs> okay. There's one other thing that I've learned over the years of being a, a, a professional uh, music producer is that you have to give yourself very strict limits very strict limits if you give yourself artistic limits uh you're much i'm much more creative so for example when i'm writing lyrics i'd give myself a specific syllabic uh limit and spe okay. ve very specific rules i have to obey and okay. in, and in that way uh you you become creative you know so i gave myself two hours for the for the re, for the remix you did it in two hours yeah okay i, I want to start first with the drums so with the drums it opens with the drums and what i kind of heard was i hear some of the original in there but i also hear something with it like what is is am i right in that like yeah. what, what are the drums first of all yeah, it's a, an industrial, um, kind of industrial drum loop. That's, that's what I made. But yeah, it's made up of uh, noises of scrap, uh, scrap metal. Being, okay. It, being hit and then, and then distorted. So it's, it's like scrap metal like drum sounds that have just been distorted and maybe put through transient transient things to give them like a drum drumming drum style attacks okay so i left the, the original drums for most of the okay songs. you did yeah All because right. i got two hours i'm not going to mess with uh mess with things <laughs> that are good already <laughs> right if so that's... if it's good if it's good don't break it yeah I almost envisioned you just like whacking away at them and oh, they're like bouncing. That know? would have been cool. <laughs> that would have been cool. Because uh, what I, w I wanted to do, I wanted to do, I wish I had done it. I wanted to like plug in a microphone and sing along uh, on the chorus. Yeah. That would have been cool. Yeah. Okay. Bye. 
All right. Yeah, that uh, would have been cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. Uh, but, <laughs> and I, but playing actually, we're actually playing percussion. Wow, I'm not, I'm not that good. Okay. So were those those were metal sounds? You're you're not you're saying that there wasn't like just you happened to look around and there was a bunch of metal crap in your studio yeah. and you started uh, yeah. banging on it. You're saying yeah, they were samples. I have a big collection of uh, music uh, concrete. Uh, okay. I, I, is, music concrete in American is uh, music concrete, I think. Before industrial music, there was a, a, a movement called, by avant-garde composers called music concrete, okay. which was making, okay, yeah. making music out of found sounds. Yeah, I was so immersed in the industrial sound movement, like wax tracks and all that kind of stuff. I, I mean, I bought everything that came out of that label. That was my yeah. only introduction to uh industrial sounds but there was harry parch who actually was a composer that taught at the university in the town that i live in who would go around and collect uh materials from junkyards and actually make sounds and arrangements and entire musicals yeah. based on just found instruments that they would beat on and I he love that. created That's like amazing. the diamond marimba and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah, I, and I was a fan of that for a while too. Maybe because I was into the industrial stuff. Oh, I don't know. Oh yeah, but awesome. I, yeah. Awesome. My favorite story of these kind of bands uh, is um, there's a guy in Paris called uh, Quentin Rollet, and he he was featured on a on a band called a Nurse Nurse with Wound. Nurse, nurse with wound. With wound. wound. Yeah. Okay. Nurse with wound. They're one one of the very first industrial bands, and uh, so they got. They booked studio time. They had studio time, so they were like all excited, and mm -hmm. uh, so they so they were going to go to the studio and make uh, and make their first record. So, uh, oh, what they did was they just didn't bring any instruments. They just went to the supermarket, stole a shopping trolley, and they went into the studio and they said to the sound engineer, "We're going to make a record, and it's going to be entirely made from sounds we can get out of this this shopping trolley." Okay. I don't know what shopping trolley is in America. Like a, no, uh, I don't know. Shopping cart, we would call it. Yeah, yeah. shopping cart. Yeah, one of those metal, yeah. one of those metal things. And that's all. Right. That's, that's a great story. And the engineer yeah. was like, the engineer is like, uh, okay, okay, guys, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I still get paid by the hour. I don't care. Yeah. So with those drum beats, now I want to move on to. Um, well, you said okay, distortion. Distortion. You said distortion. Uh, and you did add that to the vocals. Now, one, in the first part, yes, there is distorted vocals. But two, in the second verse, there is almost like a decayed, like crinkles on top of itself sort of transistor radio vocal effect. Yeah, I love radio, radio sounds. I love radio, yeah. old, old did, radio sounds. How did sounds. you achieve that? Uh, I work very fast, and I forget what I do. <laughs> I was going to uh, say, you're just trying to remember what you did, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, I, I work very, very fast, I don't actually, I work by, with my gut, and it really annoys some of the artists I work with who are used to more cerebral recordings i'm yeah. in there with the band I'm, I'm in there with the band and i'm getting i'm getting excited i'm saying i'm saying wow what happens if what happens if your guitarist like plugs his his guitar into that on that and then what happens if the guitar <laughs> if you hit the guitar with like a uh, a cushion and okay you know and we and that's a real thing we did do the cushion thing it, it didn't sound that good but that's the kind of thing that I, you know you get <laughs> And I, I got very excited because, like I said, that with slippery friction, the voice, the voice is so, so inspiring. So inspiring. Oh, thank you. And I, I re that that's the that's the key to that song. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, it's got it's, it's got a very Beck kind of feel to it. But oh, uh, yeah, all right. Yeah. And I love well, I love every, everybody loves Beck. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I I don't remember how I did the. Um, the uh the radio sound okay. uh one of the okay. ways i one of the ways i normally do radio sounds is uh, uh a plug-in called trash which is kind of cool nice i don't know if you've ever heard it. you heard of uh, it's a good name 
it's a plugin by Isotope called uh, Trash. Okay. And it and it it's one of these uh, distortion plugins with so many buttons and and uh, and uh, sliders that you don't know really what you're doing because it's very 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 complicated. There's so many that you kind of just do everything by ear and go. I think this affects this. Yeah. Sort of yeah. Thing. You go. You go. Yeah. Oh, it sounds kind of cool. I don't know what I'm doing. I I, I definitely put it through uh, some weird um, uh, uh, reverbs as well. Um, okay. I was, I've, I've been messing with a reverb called Supermassive. That is free. okay. Uh, you should to totally get that. It's awesome. Supermassive. I'm gonna write that yeah, one down. Supermassive is a free plugin and it's a uh, experimental reverb okay so could, yeah it could sound weird yeah no because there is a lot of really cool reverb and call and answer through the reverb that you did on there not only just on the vocals but on the guitar the sax you had different parts where it would kind of come in at certain times yeah. and i really liked the arrangement yeah. of the call and effect that you did on yeah that. that's uh uh that's uh how um linton quasi johnson did his remixes when he when he oh, was really like when he was employed to remix, uh, he would just put the stems of the of the remix track on his on his mixer, and and okay. and on his mixer he's got the the auxiliary uh, the auxiliary send, and when he just feels uh -huh. it, he just turns all the sends up and and fires them off to a to an old uh, old tape delays, and then okay. uh, I hope and then he hopes for the best because sometimes tape delays uh, go into uh, go into self oscillation and mm -hmm. and start to and start to feed back and then he, he and then he like kind of pulls everything back down to stop it from yeah. going uh, into just pure uh self um, re um uh feedback uh, so, so he just does that while listening yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and okay. that's awesome because right. he, he was he was in the analog world so he could do that on on cubase it takes a little bit more time because you have to grab the mouse and then and then do an automation right. Yeah. So that's a. I hate automating. Automating is a pain in the ass on the on the. Oh computers. yeah. No. Yeah. You have to draw the envelope and everything. It's just. Oh, it's, it's horrible. Why can't they just like right. invent like faders or something? Honestly. Yeah. So even on keyboards, they got the thing so you can bend shift it. Like just put something on the keyboard so you, or even just the trackpad. Yeah. Just go woo. Yeah. yeah it would be so I cool. Know. I said Linton Quasi Johnson, but it's not him. He was a. He's a a, a lyricist. Uh, 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 a lyricist that um, uh, that I used to like. No, it's not. It's not him. It'll come to you. It'll come to you. <laughs> I feel now, stupid. with with the uh, with the bass sound that's on there, did you just affect the original bass sound, or did you program the new bass sound? Because it, it's got a low end buzz to it. That's super cool. That boom, doo, 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 yeah, doo, you know. Yeah, yeah. What, watched, what did you do uh, for the bass? What I did, what I did is a is a really is a really cool trick that remixers use. Uh, is oh, really? I just, okay. I just got, I just uh, put the bass into Melodyne. Uh, Melodyne. Um, uh, what's that? It's kind of like Auto Tune. I put it into Auto Tune, okay. and then Auto yep. Auto Tune told me the notes, mm -hmm. and then I told and I told Auto Tune to give me the MIDI the MIDI file of what the bass oh. was playing. And then I just put that MIDI file into a into a, um, a synthesizer. Okay. okay. So it's All like right. stealing. It's like st you can so you, you can you can take any uh, any instrument that anyone's playing, and then use mm -hmm. use uh, Melodyne, which is basically Auto Tune, mm -hmm. to to steal to steal the 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 riff. You know. All right. So I don't. Need to, I didn't need to learn your bass line, your guy's bass line. I right. just stole it straight off and put it straight into the synthesizer that plays along. That is brilliant. I love that. When you only got, it's so simple too. When you got, when you only got ten, like a few minutes to do the bass line, that's what you got to do. I can't remember which uh, which synthesizer it was, uh, but um, I, I I definitely I definitely love putting. Uh, since behind behind bases mm -hmm. and that's something that I got I got from watching uh, 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 an interview with, with Hans Zimmer because oh. Hans Zimmer whenever okay. whenever you watch a Hans Zimmer film and there's like uh, you hear the cellos uh -huh. behind the cello behind the, the cellos or the double basses is uh, 
uh, synthesizers. I actually, that's another thing I want to try tonight too. I'm going to the studio tonight, so <laughs> you're just giving me a bunch of ideas of things I want to try. So before we go, um, is there anything you have coming up or stuff that you're doing that you, you want to mention here? Like what's, well, what's going on with you? Oh my God, so many things. Uh, because yeah. I, it, it, it's amazing. I'm a, full, I'm a full-time music producer and literally I have songs coming out uh, by artists that I've produced almost every every week sometimes two or three times a week nice i have people releasing releasing things uh so that's really cool in terms of lewis ling and the bombs uh we are working on a new record already uh, okay but it's still early days i'm writing lyrics at the moment uh i got a <laughs> well, new i've actually got a new hardcore band that i just uh, did the um we finished the record and it should be coming out in the next few weeks that's cool. Oh, yeah. all right. I'm going to keep and, an eye out for that. Yeah, and we called the band. Uh, we had arguments about the band name. Uh, we called the band Ultra Lead. Ultra Lead. Ultra Lead. And Ultra okay. Lead. And it's kind of like a. Uh, we wanted to do American hardcore, you know, mm -hmm. but because I got a British accent, it sounds like it sounds like an like a oi skinhead kind of band basically right and i'm like no no this is political hardcore we're like <laughs> we're like we're like propaganda and it's like actually it just sounds like british british street punk cool and that's coming out in a few weeks you say yeah yeah it's coming out in a few weeks we even have the the front cover wow okay so nearly all right nearly nearly ready so close so all close. right I'll keep an eye out for that. And also, I want to thank you again so much for doing the, the track and for taking the time to remix that song. I love it so much. It's such oh, a great well, version was, of the song. It was a, it was a, uh, it was a pleasure. And I got, I got a message straight away from uh, uh, the Speed, uh, Speed Kicks. Yeah, and they said, they said, oh, man, I, sick remix. We love that remix. Nice. And those yeah. guys. They did a those, remix, too. They did a remix too that didn't make it because they uh, waited too long to send it in, and Mike oh. was already in the process of putting out the album. But it's going to come out. That's why it's volume one. We're going to make another one in like six months. We're going to do That's another cool. remix album. So theirs is going to be on that. But yeah, oh. I was like, oh, I was super bummed. They had some great, interesting stuff. Yeah, so the speed keep kicks, an eye out for that in the future. The speed kicks are like they're so good at remixing. It's just yeah, I don't. They are they're amazing. They're amazing. Pew, pew. Oh.